This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Back to the Story. Vesper's going to kind of stand on her toes, and I just want to see if I see anyone who might look like Barrett, also a Genasi. I think that we should try to take as safe of a route as possible since we have Rosanna to worry about. There was uh, one Solar. He came down here, central the mission, of course, as they always are. But he betrayed Phallasol and became a god king. When the world was formed, the gods created a gate and separated the chaos or the abyss, the infinite void, from the rest of everything. It will get worse. Hopping back to the shopping, you'll have a few last things you're picking up for Orizana. You'll find a few options for your armor. There's some basic leather that's 10 gold. Um, there's a nicer version that's 45. You also find short bow, 25. Long bow is, uh, is 50 gold. An explore pack is 10 gold. There's a couple options as you look through strange fruits and the weirdest tattoos you've ever seen that seem to glow. And then there's there's some armors and stuff as well. Um. So so before I actually get anything for her, I'm going to actually take her aside. I'm going to try and find a spot where there aren't too many passersby looking on. I guess. Okay. Um, kind of hard to do, but people aren't paying as much attention to you. Um. And I'm going to hand her fifty gold. And say, I'm going she to cover shakes her head. whatever you need for travel, but I want you to have this. This is too much. You've done too much already. This is what I was paid to transport you. And I think it's better for you to have it than for me to have it. She looks at the gold in her hand, eyes wide. Or money she's probably ever seen in her life in one place. I'll hold it if you need it. Um, if if you see anything that you need that you want to buy, then, you know, there it is. Let's go get you geared up for travel. Okay. Um, she turns to walk and then stops and then gives you a hug. Almost pushes you against the, the wall of the nearby building. Uh, but you'll go continue looking at the various options. So there's regular leather, studded leather. Regular is only 10 gold. The step up is 45, but it's only one AC difference. So I think I'll go ahead and get her the regular leather. I'm going to keep try and keep that. her out of danger as much as possible anyway. Yeah, so you get her that for 10, and then there's a short bow and a long bow. The short is 25, the long is 50. And I'll turn to her... Is there one that you're more comfortable with? I have more practice with the short. Let's get you that then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a minute for 25, we'll say it includes 20 arrows. Okay. But yeah, she, you get her outfitted. The leather seems to fit. She kind of is able to stretch and move with her clothing underneath. Um, and she takes the bow and kind of strings it and then tests the tension. I will practice later. All right. Well, hopefully you won't need it while we're on the road, but better safe than sorry. Yes. And here, um, and I'll reach into a uh, forward or have everything. Into my left boot, I've got several knives and stuff, and I'll pull out one of my... Uh, I want to keep my set of throwing knives, so I'm going to pull out the dagger we got from Nostra, and I'm going to hand that to her. Okay. She takes it and... Clips it around, finds a place to put it in her belt. Thank you. Um, do you also get an explorer's pack or any rations? Yes. Yeah. I, I'd like rations. to get her an, ex an explorer's pack. Explorer's pack is 10 gold. It actually comes with 10 rations. If you wanted more rations, I think they're like a silver each. You okay. find plenty of weird dried fruits and food that you're not sure what kind of meat it is. Actually, while we're looking at weapons and armor, do they have like another set of throwing knives? Um, oh, yeah, they have they have knives. Yeah. It looks like it's basic iron is something special, but throwing knives. How much would that be? For a set of six, 
It is 15 gold pieces. I will pay that. Okay. You had six more effectively daggers, but they're in knives. Sweet. We're going to have to look at your inventory carrying capacity. <laughs> I know daggers don't weigh much, but when you start carrying 50 of them, it becomes a problem. 16. <laughs> now that I got rid of the knife. Okay. 16 extra pounds. Okay. So you guys shop if there's anything else. Um, while you're here. I don't have any other shopping I want to do, but I wouldn't mind taking a look around, seeing if there's a temple to Volta Mary in this city. It seems like a good okay. place for one. So as you're looking through the the shops, you can kind of ask the shopkeepers, um, there's no temple of any sort in the city. They say people, you know, worship freely whenever they so choose, but there's no standard standing temple. Okay. Uh, but you guys finish up shopping. We had the others at the wagons, and then Ezekiel, who got a horse. Um, do you guys eventually meet back at the cabanas? Or yeah, I'll spend the time uh, waiting for talking to the horse. One of my friends is very large. No, I will never let him ride you. Um, I'll ask as its name if it has one. Um, and I don't know how I translate Winnie to vocalizing, but. Yeah, uh, his name is Raz. Raz. All right. And then when everyone arrives, I will introduce them to Raz. Okay. Yeah, so you'll make your way eventually separately um, to the cabanas. As he heals there with a horse, probably Calvin, Amson, Melly, and Ball show up, and then followed by uh, Ellery, Orizana, and Vesper convening back at the cabanas. And there's a big horse there. With a reddish brown coat. Oh, I wasn't expecting us to find a horse until we left. I had the opportunity, and they seemed eager. This is Raz. He's very nice. Uh, hi, Raz. Vesper will curtsy, <laughs> kind of playing along. Anyway, get everything we need. Find anything out, Calvin. Uh, no. I mean, maybe. I have what? a couple of ideas, but we're not entirely sure. Nothing's certain, anyways. Fair enough. Can you find a library? No, we actually found a uh, DM. Was it a halfling? Okay. Yeah, he had a wagon. Yeah, we oh, found a oh, books. Called it a wagon of books. That's right. Apt. And he was actually quite well read in all of the books that he was selling. So we talked with him for a while, we read a few of his books, paid him for his time, and uh, I did happen to purchase one, and I hold up the, the Valisol hymnal. So this would be interesting uh, for me to look at. But yeah. Learned a little bit about a rogue solar g uh, who turned into a god king um, for a civilization, that was fun. That sounds ominous. Mm -hmm. That's a good tale. But uh, enough about us. What did you find? Oh, well, we just got Orizana geared up, ready to travel. And I um, present Orizana in her new armor. You point over and you see she's uh, setting up a fruit, an apple-type fruit that she got in the market and has set it up on a uh, rock on the beach and is kind of in the process of stepping away. Uh, with the short bow. She's like getting used to the weight. She fires. And it hits just the edge of the apple. And the apple kind of spins and falls off into the sand. If it was a bigger target like a chest, she would have hit. From about 50 feet back, she kind of hops up and down and quickly runs off to retrieve there and set it up again. He's good. And I've got a couple more healing potions in the bank now, so. Well. Anything else we need to take care of here, or should we just get started in the morning? Uh, I I do still want to find a local legend uh, about the the place, the area, that kind of thing. But we can do that tonight. Maybe we can ask someone what all this chitin is from. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And I'd still like to visit the rummery. Might also be a good place to get some stories. True. Oh, uh, 
Did anyone else want to send any letters home? I wrote one, but I forgot to find somebody heading back towards em- Ember Shore to send it with when we were in White Guard. I'd very much like to write home, yeah. Maybe we can find if there's a ship heading back that way. Yeah, let's do that tonight real quick, and then tomorrow or stories and booze. Or do we want to do it the other way around? Stories and booze tonight, letters in the morning. That's probably a better idea. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I always find my most heartfelt notes are hungover written in the morning as well. <laughs> e- Ezekiel, do you ever get hungover? It doesn't seem like you drink a lot of alcohol. Not anymore, dear. Well, those are stories I think we shall hear. <laughs> Maybe another time. They're not flattering. Mm. To be fair, are they ever? So, the after your various business adventures you guys were doing throughout the day, um, you arrived maybe a little before noon, so it's getting later in the afternoon. You still have a few hours of sun before it begins to set. We are just kind of hanging out until then. We are going to find something, get drinks. Anyone want to go swimming? Uh, not particularly, but I don't mind hanging out at the beach. I would love to go for a swim. I'll come along, but I don't think I, I'll swim. I'll play music. Everyone else is going. I will doubt. Okay. So y'all spend the rest of the day kind of having a beach day, um, swimming, maybe having a few drinks, listening to music, playing music, um, enjoying life in the warm sands. There's many other people on the South Strand that are just enjoying the sun, swimming. As, How warm um, is the water here, actually? I might test um, it. It's about as warm as Embershore's waters, which is warmish, because the Emberstone's warm at somewhat. So it's not cold. It's not, but it's not summertime either. So it's not super warm. Okay, I'll stay on the beach. <laughs> um, before any of us go in the water, I guess I will cast water breathing on anyone who's going in. Or actually, I, I'll just cast it on everybody except for Vesper, because she doesn't need it anyway. In case somebody changes their mind about swimming. So with the ability to breathe underwater, what are y'all really able to fully delve beneath these bluish-green waters, see what lies beneath? You see a shelf of sand that quickly drops off in depth. You see some rock formations. Deeper, you even see... Bottles that have sunk down here. You see even parts of chitinous material that's semi-buried. Swimming around, you even see, as you're just exploring the area, these windows that appear to be out of glass. You can see vague movements inside of what looks like a tavern inside um, that are looking into the water beneath. We all take some time enjoying swimming around, hanging out on the beach. Warzana practices a little more before just laying out. Um, and the sun begins to set as you watch the, the sunset to the west, uh, to your right as you're laying facing the waters. And you really see for the first time, in the very distance, looking south, you can see, maybe vaguely make it out what looks like landmass on the other side as the sun sets. Before we uh, leave the water, before I leave the water, I want to dive down pretty deep, I guess, and see if I can just pick up a small stone or piece of glass that's been smoothed out or something like that from the bottom. Sure. Yeah, you can do that. You swim down, eventually picking up a few, and then you find another that's better, eventually trading rocks for cooler rocks for smooth glass until you find a piece of sea glass that you really like um, before coming back up. And as the sun fades down and the night kind of takes over you can see the nightlife flips a switch in the south south strand this is a popular place at night you see one of the buildings the nicer more expensive place that you decided not to stay at those glass jars you see buzzing around inside you see some sort of moth-like creature this glowing this bluish purple color Um, They seem to be eating some something inside the jars, and it glows on this entirety of that what looks like a very fine hotel. Torches are set up tiki-style. 
as people drink on the beach. Can we get closer, close enough to look at the moths in the jars? Yeah, you can, you can get close enough. Um, there's some kind of on the outskirts where you can see them without having to actually be able to enter. Um, and you see what looks like fairly large moths. They have four sets of wings. They glow a purplish color, almost bioluminescent. They seem to be chewing on a pile of, you're not sure what, like salt, maybe? Mm-hmm. I think Vesper just kind of stares at them for a bit, a little bit distantly, maybe. Yeah. You enjoy the light, and you can see there seem to be more of them the higher you go in this this luxurious bar, which is called the Night Jar Lounge. And you can see the rooftop has a lot of people, and it seems like there's mostly lit by these jars and moths, very few actual open flames. There's something familiar about this, but I can't place it. It's weird. Do you want to go have a drink? No, I... Not here. Well, then where to? Uh, the Rummery, right? I'm going to the Rummery. And are you talking about the Sweet Anchor Rummery? That Amson found out about? I think that's what it was. Okay. Is everyone going there? Calvin, Amson, Ezekiel? Uh, I'm not going to get too far from everybody else. Okay. Kind of want to stay in the water, but I'll go. No, fuck it. Ezekiel says, uh, I'm going to practice something. You guys have fun. I'm not going to drink anyway. All right. See you later then. And you'll see him, like, jump into the water and do this, like, mermaid thing, and then he's a dolphin. Any of the crowd that watches claps and applauds drunkenly. As you're nice. practicing your, your dolphin swimming, um, the others you find pointed around, um, easy to find. Most people know about it. To the sweet anchor rummery, he sees you head towards it. There's sort of an outside tent like set up, um, and there's a big, massive anchor that's rusted and salted that marks the entrance. Um, there's stairwell down, um, but at the door you see a uh, rather broad-shouldered man, maybe. Really grisly, massive beard. It's hard to really tell. Looks like a dwarf that's six foot two. It's really strange what they are. Um, but they're just kind of standing at the uh, head of the stairs. The entrance is uh, gold for the privilege. Well, all right. Pass the gold over. Mm-hmm. Um, he takes it and then gestures you down. Um, heading down, you see you enter into the stairwell that crisscrosses back and forth down, entering into a mix of sandstone and a mix of chitinous interior. Um, it has strange angles because it's built within some once living creature. So there's strange turns and points that mark the stairwell down uh, based on whatever creature this was before. Um, the walls curve at strange angles. There's sudden right and left turns without warning. But eventually, the lower you go and the further you go from this entrance, you start to feel vibrations. You start to feel movement as if you're on a ship. And you realize the waves that are impacting this, it's loose enough for you to be able to feel that slight vibration. Um, It's not enough to make you sick, but it's enough for you to notice. Um, As you come down, you see there's a main room with a few tables set up. To the right, there's a bar and looks like maybe a kitchen somewhere over there. Beyond it, you can see through the edge of the bar, there looks like another section, another room that sort of separated a more private uh, experience. There are a number of golden elves, all scantily clad, uh, men and women in like golden swimsuits, it looks like, that are serving various drinks, expensive oysters and saber fin, expensive foods. And you can see those glass windows looking out beneath the water into the sea. Walking up and asking about food and drink, you quickly realize it's a pretty expensive place. A drink is three gold. A meal, an appetizer meal is about three gold as well. Um, A full meal is about five. It's a pretty expensive place. I would like to, if it's particularly expensive, then I would like to offer my services as a musician to perhaps lower the price a little bit for us. You And Amson, you would hear the music as you walked into. You hear they do have a small stage set up um, where they have something like a cello that's being played alongside a 
a viola, the midsize. Okay. I'll still offer it. They politely decline. We have music. Perhaps we can take your name, maybe next time. Well, I'm only going to be here for not very long. I think that we were planning on possibly leaving tomorrow morning. And uh, I happen to have a little bit of uh, magic to enhance some of my performances, so it's a rare occasion. Make a persuasion check. All right. The rest of you give me perception checks. Who's over there? 18. 22. That's a 28 persuasion. Okay. 19 um, perception. Okay. Uh, so 19 perception. Vesper yours was high as well? Yeah, it was 18. And Ellery's what was yours? 22. Oh, yeah, okay. So you're all super good at looking at things. So looking around, all three of you will actually see everyone in this bar, this rubbery, is wearing fine clothes, jewelry. These are people that have wealth and are accustomed to spending it. You, A few of you notice some flirtation going between some of the uh, workers and the patrons. Um, there seems to be money exchange. This seems to, they seem to offer more than just drinks and food. They're looking at the stack of coins that it's exchanged. You don't get exact number, but expensive. You also notice while there are numerous humans, looks like there's a few with gray, um, almost pigment, less uh, skin and coloration. Uh, there's also some elves that are pale with these silver hair. You see one is in long robes of purple and blue with this sash of elven stitchery. Looks like some sort of dignitary or noble um, elven gentleman. And flanked on both sides as he's pouring over some ledger, drinking um, this rum. You see two uh, elves as well, silver hair, pale skin. And they are wearing this turquoise colored glass armor it's hard to explain it looks like some sort of greenish blue glass armor both of them are wearing these glaives which at the tip the glaive actually curves um, almost sickle like in fashion and they're kind of scanning the room go meet their gaze they meet you meet yours they seem to be guards in some rare armor you've never seen before for whoever this important person is amson as you Explain that. Um, well, between sets, maybe you can play a song or two. I'll throw a drink in for you. Would you prefer a sweet anchor, margarita, a colada, or a cloud walker? Cloud walker sounds interesting. I'd like that. Mm, they always go for it. He nods, gestures for you to sit, and he drinks for now. Arizona, do you want anything? Um, she's wide-eyed, like looking around at all this. She was like not even listening. I'll have a margarita and another for Orizana. Okay, so that's six gold total. I'll have one as well. Okay, three gold each for um, whatever drink you get. You're poured the this margarita that is slightly spicy with peppers. Um, it doesn't sting though going down, uh, but it is an interesting flavor. Um, slightly sweet. Uh, but you all sit in, enjoy the music, you enjoy people watching at the strange company. You see what looks like a half orc gentleman, big beard, very overweight, and in extremely fine, like silk clothes. Um, extreme, he looks like a noble, even a king, but he's this half orc. You've never seen someone dressed that finely before. But you'll enjoy the people watching, um, and eventually the musicians take a break and give Amson a chance. Amson, as you're stepping up to the stage and preparing to give your performance, um, Ezekiel, you're swimming as a dolphin? Correct. Um, okay. Are you going anywhere in particular, or just kind of practicing, hopping through the waves? or? I think I'm getting used to it. I th I'm figuring out how it works. I'll explore underwater. Uh, Ellery's water breathing lets me stay. I mean, I can stay under pretty long as a dolphin, but now I can stay under forever, so I'll just kind of Pop on under, see, practice swimming and see what I see. Okay. Yeah, and as you swim under, you see the beach drops off far. As you kind of follow the line of the city, you can find places. You can find those glass windows and you can find places where you, there's a shelf underneath as part of this chitinous crustacean of whatever it was kind of sticks out um, from the sand a bit. 
and you kind of get to explore some of the areas down there. You see part of a claw that's half buried still, or probably 90% buried, but you can tell from the size of it, this thing was massive. You know, the size of a small village, whatever it was. Is it like lobster-like or something? It's hard to tell because so much of it is buried. It could be lobster-like, it could be crab-like. Definitely crustacean of some sort. Got it. Got it. Cool, Um, yeah. I can hold the form for up to like two hours, so I'll just swim around, I don't know, live my little mermaid fantasy and explore a sunken ship. Everything's fine. Okay. As you're doing that, um, we hop hop back. Amson, as you take to the stage, prepare your performance. Amson gets ready to go. I'm going to use thaumaturgy um, and do a couple effects. I'm going to kind of cause the lights to sort of like dim a little bit everywhere but around the stage. And I'm going to like make the sound of like a low drum roll. Okay. Everyone kind of looks around and takes notice, confused, but intrigued. I'll give Amson a wink before he starts. So I have a question about a spell that I have. So, minor illusion. If you create a sound, its volume can range from a whisper to a scream. It can be your voice, someone else's voice, a lion's or a beating of drums, or any other sound you choose. Can it be perhaps a small orchestral band? I think so. Not a gigantic group of people, but, you know, a few different instruments. Yeah. And I think for, like, Amson or Hugo or someone could definitely tell the difference. They have the ear to mark it. But for most people, they're gonna. This is gonna sound like we're in a small orchestra for them. Okay. So uh, Amson will take out one of his uh, crossbow bolts, and he'll start waving it through the air as if he's conducting, and it, he'll wait for a few seconds of silence before some strings will quietly start playing out of thin air, and he'll keep going as a couple more strings, and then some woodwinds, some flutes and then a low drum, and then start building up and building up and start playing songs out of thin air using this spell. Okay, give me a performance check. Add advantage, because that's pretty cool. Um, Could I also add something to this? Sure. If there are any, I don't know, torches or lamps or something like that near the stage that have open flames, I'd like to use control flames to make the figures of small... Dancers dancing along to the music. Yeah. Do you have to be close to them, or is it like a 30-foot range or something? 60 feet. Okay, yeah. And Amson, that performance? Uh, it's going to be like 70. No, shit. no that's 21. <laughs> okay. So I think in this room, as Amson is taking the stage, there's this low drum from Vesper. As the lights all dim, everyone looks around and sees this person take the stage. People are intrigued. They kind of lean forward. They quiet down. They kind of tap each other. Shh, this, this. They think it's part of this show. Um, they're unaware it's some person that just walked in off the street. And as he begins to pull his strings or uh, dance with his crossbow bolt, the flames begin to sort of get big and small and bounce and bounce. And eventually you start to see the flames kind of open up the arms and begin to dance and twirl like ballerinas on each and every candle and torch lighting up dimly this room as you be people kind of ooing and awing, pointing this way and that and their various candles um, as the strings come in and the flutes and the deeper drums are roaring. And eventually you see everyone is just mouth open uh, watching this performance go on. And as the final crescendo comes and kind of rings out the final note for Mamson, there is a loud applause that erupts from this room. Um, you see the dignitary-looking high elven gentleman stands up abruptly. His two guards stand up as well, um, just to match him. And he's just, brava, brava. And you can just hear him in this strange, snooty accent, just blown away by this random performance. You get lots of nods and cheers. And yeah, the person in the back, like, nods, points at you, and... uh Takes a bottle, looks like a wine ball, and just puts it on the stage and points at you. So, uh, at the end of the piece, Amson's going to uh, take a bow, and with uh, prestidigitation, he's going to just create a few sparks, and then grab them, and then fling them out in kind of to his side as they fade out. And then uh, he's 
going to sit back down and let the actual musicians do their thing. Yeah, so they take back over. The Romery kind of balances again, finds that flow again eventually. He knows a few of the people in the private section kind of come out to see what the fuss is about. He pours you a drink. He puts a darker liquid in, or he puts in a lighter liquid in first. Um, almost seems to glow um, like liquid moonlight. Pours it up about 75% of the way, and then pours in a dark liquid uh, to finish it up. And that dark liquid almost viscously drips to the bottom and forms this strange jellyfish-like form that kind of pulses in this liquid. The cloud walker. And it's not a real jellyfish, but it does have that appearance. Thank you very much. Drinking it down, it has almost an electric shock of a flavor to it. But otherwise, after that first shock, it's smooth and rolls down. A good drink. And he also slides to the side. Bottle of wine purchased by uh, your friend there. And he points over towards the dignitary looking aisle. Amson will just give a small wave in that direction and then nod his head and then take the bottle and he'll come back to the table where everybody else is. Okay. So you'll gather up drinking your expensive drinks, enjoying the music um, and the looks and oohs and ahs after Amson's performance with the two aiding as well. That was really good, Amson. Not bad. I've been uh, practicing some magic. And then I'll pour everybody some of this wine. Um, and tasting the wine, it's it's something like a Merlot. It's heavy, very dry. It's very good, though. There's parts of it that are sweet. Maybe a cherry taste to it. It's You're not wine connoisseurs, but it's good. It's good wine. But eventually y'all drink your wine, maybe have another drink or two, listen to the music in this very expensive and fine establishment. And do y'all eventually find your way back or do anything else? Yeah, as we're, as we're going back, I think I'm going to kind of pull Amson a little bit behind everyone else. Um, I've been meaning to ask you this actually for a couple months now. Um, there's been this song stuck in my head and I don't know, it popped into it again tonight and I don't know where I've heard it before. I don't know if it's one of yours or if we heard it somewhere, but you're better at identifying melodies than I am. All right. Oh, what does it sound like? Uh, it's, yeah, I don't have much of a voice, but it's, uh, something like, um, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And that's it. It's that tiny little snatch in my head, and I can't, for the life of me, place it where I heard it. Uh, I don't think I need to roll for that because I recognize it. Um, yeah, I I sang at one point. Okay, because I it keeps getting stuck in my head, and I don't know the words or anything. So, uh, maybe maybe sometime soon I'll I'll show you it. Okay. And uh, I'll simply just, uh, yeah, I'll take out my flute that I have, that I don't play nearly as much as my lute, but I'll take out, take out my flute, and as we're walking back, I'll just quietly play the melody. Okay. So playing that melody, you'll head back to South Strand, which is still, even this late, is still hopping, especially that nicer tavern. You find Ezekiel, are Ezekiel, are you just hanging out on the beach at this point after your hours as a dolphin? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'll go hang out with Raz at the end. Okay. Yeah. So you find Ezekiel and, and the horse is just, I guess, hanging out by the, uh, the cabanas as you'll eventually find your rooms in quotation marks and eventually can pick your cabanas, pick your rooms and hammocks. And find rest. You can see this night sky above the stars. The moon with its purplish blue color shining down this sort of smiling crescent is slowly widening. And eventually find rest, even if it is drunk for some of you. The next day, the sun rises. You hear the waves. You hear people moving, seagulls calling, a few bells in the distance. As you'll rise and gather. So, do you think we're going to be setting out today? I don't know. We've got two more nights in the rooms, but I don't have any particular business here in town. 
I wouldn't mind getting on the road. Uh, I'll be right back. Just a moment. And I'm going to go to whoever's running the this establishment at this point in the day. And uh, I'm going to go up and just quickly ask. Uh, just a quick question. Who do you think is the best storyteller in town? Is there anybody famous? Uh, she's like in mid setting up shop for the day. Uh, yeah, I guess. She kind of looks at her arm. There's a tattooist in town. The best I've ever seen. He's over in the trading docks. Let's see. His name's Sarfir. He's kind of an asshole, but he's been around the block. He's an artist. He's a tattooist, but he's an artist first. He runs a small place called the Ardent Marks. He's expensive, but good. Uh, take my advice. Bring up art, painting, or tattoos, or songs, or whatever. He's really mean unless you talk about that kind of stuff. But he's, and she points to her arms and you see this intricate pattern. Some lines thicker, some smaller, and you see the ink almost is pearlescent, changing colors like oil upon water. He has some really nice ink. I am some will nod in the way. All right. Thank you very much. And yeah. he'll go back. Okay. Well, if, uh, if we're all ready to leave, I found somebody who can. I think I found somebody who can tell me a quick story before we go. And I did want to find a ship heading back towards home. Right. Great. I penned a letter before I went to bed, so... Okay. So, on your... Is the plan that you're heading out? I think so. Like, I think after so. doing these things? Okay. Um, have you decided what direction, where you're heading? I think we're following roughly the path that Vesper had... Okay. So we're heading towards Hamel, looks like next. Okay. Yep. Sure. Okay, so on your way out as you gather all your stuff. For those of you looking for a ship, give me an investigation check. Oh, not so good at ease. Five. Amson got a nineteen. Okay. So Amson, you find a ship that's heading back towards White Guard, a dwarvish vessel. They don't intend to go further to Embershore, but they are going to White Guard. Embershore is a long journey across the sea, but he could he offers to take it at least that far, leave it with the wharf captain, and until they find someone heading all the way that that way. Okay. And he'll he'll say, I don't know how you know he he essentially doesn't mind taking the paper. It weighs nothing. It's not that big of a deal to drop it off. But he said he says I don't know you know gold might keep it safe um, once I leave it for them to actually give it to someone. Okay, so if you want to leave some gold, I'll leave it with the letters. Okay. Okay. So you pick how much gold he bought. It says maybe, maybe ten, five, depends on what you want to offer. And he'll just leave it with the letters when he gets there. And hopefully someone will pick it up and take it the rest of the way. Um, uh, Vesper, do you want to go half and half, five each? I was thinking just that. And okay. Ampson will also pay a little bit for his own. Okay. Um, so you'll leave and with the letters and the gold, and uh, continue kind of making your way out. Were you stopping um, at the Ardent Marks on the way out or something else? If Amson is going to take some time to stop somewhere, I'm also going to take a little bit of time to stop at the beach, I guess, and um, meet everybody at the gate when we, le when, uh, well, in a few, shortly. <laughs> Sure. So, um, Ellery kind of breaks off to spend some time at the beach um, as you're continuing your way, meeting at the maybe the stables outside town. Amson, you ask around and you find the Ardent Mark, a small place of stall business that's kind of half built in the sandstone, half just uh, cloth tapestries. You see a golden elf, thin, um, almost elongated, lanky elf, tan skin, black hair with a sharp widow's peak. He has dark stubble on his sharp chin and these kind of green yellow eyes, number of tattoos on his right arm, all incredibly intricate. Does this seem to be the person I was told to see? Uh yeah, there's a sign outside that says Ardent Marks. Okay. Then I'll I'll come up and I'll say, um <clears throat> excuse me. Um I've seen your work around town and it's quite wonderful. I was wondering if you'd like to regale me with the story of how you learned how to do this. 
right off the bat, give me a persuasion check. Sure. You can see this guy looks over, 24. eyes half rolled already. Um, but as soon as you mention it, his art, seeing it around town, yes, I will do this. Come inside. And he's preparing these inks. You see these ink wells of various, some looks like blood, others look like strange squid inks from some monsters you've never seen or heard of before. Um, it's just kind of mixing them up um, with alcohol or whatever you mix inks with. So I, um, well, I picked it up originally when I was a boy. Um, I was one of the markers of the city. Uh, um, do you know the markers? I can see you do not. When someone commits a crime in a golden elf port, uh, we do not jail, we do not um, kill, we mark and banish for time. Smaller things, six months, year, maybe. Uh, something bad you're marked uh, for life it is a uh, magical mark appears on the forehead. So I would do this, and if you ever try to take a golden elf ship or enter into a golden elf port, uh, none would have you. And so um, it is our way of uh, enforcing society. Um, I did that and eventually got into exploring, hunting monsters, and found you could collect some of their blood, saliva in some cases, other fluids I would rather not speak about. That it would work as incredible inks, and he kind of gestures to some of the jars in front of him. That is absolutely fascinating. Well, my friends and I are ad adventurers and travelers ourselves, and we've slain a few creatures in our life, but never thought that there they could be used for such beautiful artwork. That's astounding. You can see flattering works on this guy. It one hundred percent works. He sits back, chest out, prideful. Um, he's going to lean back, relaxing, hands behind his head. Yes, it is something else. I have gotten quite good. Is that why you're here? He leans back forward to get a tattoo. I could see one on your neck, perhaps. Well, you certainly got the eye for it. I myself am not uh, an artist in this such of a sense, but I am a storyteller, and I like to collect stories from wherever I go. You see, my friends and I are going... We're going to be leaving today. I'm actually hanging them up but uh, by by talking, but I just had to meet you before we go. So I was wondering perhaps if I could share a story from where I come from, and you could share a story from around this area, and maybe yeah, I might actually get a tattoo from you. That sounds like a good idea, especially if you see it on me. Yes, I see when it will be uh, subtle. Uh, I have ink. It is nearly clear. It would not be garish, ostentatious, but a subtle mark. It would be beautiful. I am seeing it now. Of course. Well, if you would like to do this, uh, if you would like to tattoo this on me while we tell stories, that sounds wonderful. Mm. Give me one more persuasion check. Okay. Not as good as the last one, so I'm going to use luck. So why not? That's significantly worse. Uh, so that's a 18. The ink is uh, ectoplasmic uh, remains from otherworldly entities, but it appears perfectly. It is hard to come by, though. I would give you this uh, for 50 old we'll pieces. I would put this mark upon you. Sure. Wonderful. And the story, you say, as he kind of get puts you in this chair place, um, kind of tilts your head, moves any hair aside, a story from this place. Yes, I'm, I'm hoping to find stories from every town that I visit on, on my travels. Okay. So as he prepares the ink, and as he prepares your neck, and then begins to give you the tattoo, uh, he tells you some stories. Um, well, the first, I suppose you should know, everyone tells this story, is the story of Gacho. Though I don't like the story, I'm not fond of it. Because no one knows. It is a beast. Massive. Some say a titan. Killed by angels of the gods. Blah, blah, blah. Boring. But there's something interesting on these Salamis Isles and coast. Have you heard of the Vedana? I will tell you about the Vedana. Wild elves. They could not be tamed. Angry people. Heavily tattooed. Oh, garish. Tribal. They live along the coast and the islands of the border regions. They were not much of a problem for a long time. 
but a few decades ago. It gets bolder, attacking the roads, attacking even this city on the edges. They would even fire upon boats passing by, and it was found out why. They have a queen now. We call her the Amber Witch. They say she is the most beautiful creature you've ever seen. And perhaps the last, they say laying your eyes upon her will blind you with her beauty. They say hearing her voice angelic will make your ears bleed and cause you to go deaf to any other sound but her voice. They say that the Verdana who follow her are glittered, their cheeks and their shoulders, just as she is. But there is darkness to this beauty. As she takes plants the grow upon the aisles, and she takes her followers, the select few, who prove loyal, and remove their heart, putting in this plant who beats with fire. We call these the bloom hearts. They lack emotion once their hearts are stolen, but they fight fiercely for the amber witch. Take care. Walk with caution upon the Ios and coast of the Amber Witch upon daydreams bask in its shores. Um, he tells you these stories, or this story, as he finishes up his tattoo, kind of wipes it away, um, leaving this mark. You feel pain as the injection hits, but then after he finishes, you feel a slight coolness, as if someone's holding ice in a pattern upon your neck. Um, he finds a piece of a mirror and kind of shows you this um, intricate pattern that somewhat resembles something between a bird and a lute, kind of depending on what angle you look at, it. but it's very faint. You really wouldn't notice it unless you get up to you and are looking for it. It will appear brighter in the moonlight. Well, thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. Well, uh, uh, as a fellow, fellow teller of tales, it is my responsibility to tell one to you from where I come from, if you would like to hear it. He nods as he begins to clean up. Okay. So I will tell him about the myth of the stallions and Horse King Fairnow, uh, a tale from a land close near to Deadwood, um, about the regal plains and how there was this horse king, and how the horses were stronger, mightier, more beautiful than anyone any of the other horses in all the entire world, etc., etc. Um, he enjoys that story. Perhaps I will design a horse. Thank you. He kind of shakes your hand again, gets your name one more time. I'm Sonom's blossom. Yes. Take care. Wear it with pride. I absolutely will. Thank you. And, and as you walk out, he calls out, and remember, caution along the day James bask. Thank you for the warning, friend. Okay. So you exit, catch up, um, as it took a little while to get a damn tattoo. <laughs> you meet up with your friends who are kind of waiting at the edge of town. Were you guys doing anything in particular as you're waiting? Um, at the beach, I would like to find a spot that doesn't have too many people around and just kneel in the sand hold onto my locket and try to pray to Volta Mary. Um, and I'm going to say, Volta Mary, I've, I've never really learned how to pray properly. So I guess I'm just going to talk to you. Maybe that's all that prayer really is. Thank you for a safe journey across the sea, though it was a confusing one. We all made it across, and I am very grateful for that. We're leaving the sea, but I guess a storm can brew anywhere. So, I don't feel so much like I'm leaving you. This, this journey that we're on, I know I'm searching for a lot of things right now. Some of them, I know what they are. I know I'm hoping to find some word of what happened to my mom. I don't know if I'll find that anywhere along this road, but I'm still looking. And I'm looking for answers about who I am and what I am. I'm looking for something else, and I don't know what it is. Give me just a straight wisdom check. 
That's 12. Okay. You speak for a little while in this quiet part of the beach as you can find on some jetties. Um, when you open your eyes and you see the waves kind of rolling in during the day, you see clear skies as far as you can see. There's a few white clouds overhead. It's a clear day. Well, we may be traveling over land now, but I hope you'll still be with us. And I think I just sit and watch the waves for a few more minutes before I get up to go find my friends. Okay. You rejoin them. Taking a while. Vesper might kind of just go for a little walk herself and find a kind of quiet place as well. And I'm going to try sending for the first time. And I kind of want to try, because we talked about how we're going to categorize familiarity. I kind of want to try to contact Halos. Okay. So cast the spell. What do you say? Uh, I've already counted these words out. I say, um, I am your daughter, Vesper Fidelis. I only recently learned you were alive. If you can hear me, please respond. I'll try to find you. So as you, through Aiyin, put these words of hope into the air and stretch them out, you listen intently. You hear waves rolling. Your wind. You close your eyes. And you try to hear something. Words, a whisper, a sigh, anything. And you hear the waves and the wind, the bells and the people, and you feel a warmth on your fingers and the wind that rolls through your hair. But no reply, no words, no whisper, and no sigh. And I'll go back to the others. Okay. Calvin, Ezekiel, uh, do you guys want to find a quiet place on the beach? <laughs> like together? Yeah, sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think Ezekiel will try, and if they're taking forever, try and find beggars, preferably children, toss them a few coins, heal any diseases that they have with his couple lay on hands. Just as he's bored and feels like preaching. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely find a few kids. You don't find any that are sick, strangely enough. You haven't really seen... There's poor people, but none that are like dirt poor. You see the city seems pretty well taken care of. It's With all the trade, there must be enough gold to go around to kind of trickle down, so to speak. He gets kind of a sneer on his face as he realizes this and then just pouts by the gate. <laughs> okay. And there's no gate, actually, but you do stand by the edge of town. Uh, Calvin, are you doing anything? No. Probably just hanging with Melly and Ball, playing yeah. cards or what the fuck ever. Okay. Yeah. Um, eventually, the others who lag behind eventually rejoin. You'll know, begin to set out to leave the city. You'll travel northward towards Hamel along this area. As you begin to leave further and further from the city, you're traveling on these roads, these coastal trails, more like. To the right, you see forest, and to the left, marshy, golden grasslands and marshlands, um, a few barrier islands every now and then as you travel. There's a spring wind. Um, that comes through. You can see vines are beginning to sprout small blooms as it's early spring. The weather's warm. Kind of reminds you of Severwind as there's a bit of a wind, uh, but the skies are absolutely clear. You can see Ezekiel probably notices this uh, at least first uh, as he's attuned to nature, like uh, as he sees seahawks that fly overhead diving into the water after krill or fish or whatever they eat. See a few turtles basking. Um, on the shore, on stones or logs. You see oysters, actually. Oyster beds, sharp, with mussels and maybe even a pearl in there as you pass by, heading north. Hey, Ezekiel. Yes? Um, Do you have an idea of what kinds of creatures we might expect to see on the road? What things are, uh, what was that word, um, in indigenous to the area? I'm sure that I do. Um, yeah. 
you can uh, take 10 with a nature check or roll it. You, you definitely know some of them you've seen. I'll just take 10, so that's 13. Okay. You know, coastal-wise, there's some sea hulk like creatures, a few eagles. There's all the, the standard forest creatures that you would think of. Deer and squirrels and rabbits and birds. There's a few interesting ones, uh, ones you're not sure exactly what the name of. The sort of something between a rabbit and a cat. Every now and then you'll see one of those raccoon cat creatures. And you've also heard of but haven't seen these. They're called red wolves. And they're something like foxes, but they're large, the size of dogs. I'll relay those. There's also lots of insects on the coast. Hmm. So no Valrin or anything like that? Not usually. Not Especially not close to the path. I mean, deep in the woods, there are all kinds of critters that I don't necessarily know all of them, but... You mean you can't turn into everything? Not yet, but give me time. <laughs> okay. And, um, y'all know, you've asked around and know Hamill's about three days away. So you'll begin to move um, and head in that direction. And as you're setting out along the coast... As the city, Port Gatru, falls behind you out of sight, and nature sort of takes over in all directions, sea to the left and marsh, forest to the right, a long expanse ahead. That's where we're going to go ahead and close off, and we'll pick up next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, NPCs, or behind the scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or on our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.